So um, for the last few years, people have been asking me, like, why do you have those plain white slides with black text on them? Why do you all have like just plain white with black text? So now you'll have black slides with white text. And uh, these slides will be about a feature which is uh, not yet in the main trunk, but it's being heavily developed. And I'll mention that a bit more uh, in more detail later, how heavily developed. And that is encrypting the uh, communication between the Zabbix demons. That's coming for Zabbix 3.0. If you forgot, that's the version which is the next version that will be released at some point. So uh, when we talk about the communication between the Zabbix demons, and that's obviously in the most uh, uh, the most widely used one, probably is uh, between the Zabbix server and the Zabbix agent. Although lately the proxies are getting so popular that we 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 cannot uh, avoid mentioning them. Um, we should not avoid mentioning them right here. So uh, obviously server to the agent, server to the proxy, and proxy to the agent. All of these will be supported uh, for encryption. Looking at how things are right now, uh, we don't have any built-in encryption in Zabbix and uh, two main problems that arise from this. Uh, the information that is being transmitted that can uh, fairly easily be intercepted if it's in a local network, that's maybe a bit less of a problem. But uh, if you're monitoring some customer environment over the internet, then obviously that information, you should not rely on nobody seeing it. And uh, regarding the uh, authentication, you never know whom you're really talking to for sure. That might be your customer, but maybe somebody else who is kind of doing something nasty. Or if something is connecting to your Zabbix, then there's even a bit bigger problem. And uh, you never know who's sending you the data for sure. In most cases, you just trust that the data is uh, truthful, that it's coming from the proper source. Um, <clears throat> You might have seen the Zabbix protocols. So they look something like this. Uh, I don't know how readable that is. Uh, as I said, black background is not that great, but well, I might return to the white one next year. So um, it's uh, very good for debugging because it's fairly human readable. It's plain text. If you would do TCP dump, that's pretty much what you would see. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, you can see quite complete documentation on the current protocols in the uh, zabbix.org. There's a section for this devoted to different versions of Zabbix, different components and how they communicate. Uh, talking about the information that is sent between the components and what could be accidentally exposed or what somebody would try to, to gather from the communication between your Zabbix server and the environments you're monitoring. <clears throat> So that could be something as uh, as maybe initially not that critically sounding like host names, but uh, host names might reveal information about your network topology, about the systems you are running, about the services you are running potentially, uh, which might give the, uh, the attacker idea about uh, maybe what uh, security loopholes they might be able to exploit. Uh, SNMP community strings. If you're monitoring something using SNMP, that's pretty much the, the all the SNMP authentication data is being transmitted plain text, let's say, from the Zabbix server to the Zabbix proxies. And uh, you might have also things like SSH, passwords, IPMI, usernames and passwords, and potentially lots of different things. Think about what you are monitoring and what you have inserted in Zabbix to be able to monitor that. And if you, especially if you're using the proxies, then that information goes from here to there in plain text right now, uh, at least as far as Zabbix components are concerned. Uh, so what else could be uh, exposed? The, the monitor data, that's probably not that critical, right? What? That's, uh, yeah, not, not that many security uh, personnel here, I guess, because those would probably go like, boo. Uh, there's obviously lots of things one could find out from the monitor data. If you're just monitoring CPU load, let's say, probably not. That's not very uh, sensitive. But if you're monitoring log files, that already might give a lot of things right there. So uh, not just the configuration data that's being transmitted, the month or uh, the, the actual values that are being gathered, they might be uh, a problem security-wise. Uh, if you are using some solution to uh, make Zabbix data not easily sniffable, not easily retrievable uh, when it's being transmitted, what do you use, those who are doing that? Uh, a tunnel of what? S-Tunnel, okay, anything else? 
OpenVPN, so some VPN solution, okay, anything else? SSH port forwarding, I guess. Okay, so uh, some VPN, S-Tunnel, and SSH port forwarding. If there's anything else, then let me know, I'll just add that here. And uh, yeah, these are probably in that order popularity-wise, I would say, from what I've seen. Uh, they all have their own benefits and their own problems. Some are easier to set up, but uh, a bit harder to maintain, let's say, uh, making sure that the SSH port forwarding is up. Uh, there are solutions, but they're not standard, at least, and not in all of the distributions. Uh, VPN solutions, they're a bit more pain to set up, at least initially. Uh, and um, S-Tunnel, uh, might be fairly easy to set up and fairly easy to maintain, but every now and then uh, we, we discover some strange things being reported by people using it in, uh, together with Zabbix. And um, so these are very, very helpful, but uh, it's uh, an extra step that you have to take outside of Zabbix, an extra configuration that has to be maintained. And um, yeah, you probably uh, figured out that uh, I'll, I'll try to advertise how great and how actually easy to use the solution that's coming for 3.0 will be as well. And when talking about encryption, there's uh, fairly often the analogy of knock knock, who's there, does that, uh, challenge mechanisms and so on. Uh, you might have seen this one floating around the internet a while ago. It uh, probably depends on how old you are, whether you're getting this, but oh well. <laughs> So, uh, the Zabbix version might be something like this. Okay, there's not even the really step, because Zabbix just goes like, oh, okay, thank you. I'll take the data. If you're the Zabbix server, that's good. I, I, I like that you're telling me that, at least. So, um, what's coming uh, up for Zabbix 3.0 is the built-in encryption, and uh, what has been developed and what is still being developed is the uh, pre-shared key support and the certificate-based encryption as well. Uh, so obviously, when I'm saying encryption, that pretty much always implies authentication unless I specifically talk about authentication. Um, initial plan, as far as I followed all that, was to uh, create the certificate-based uh, encryption and authentication solution. Uh, the pre-shared key uh, solution was included uh, pretty much because the library supported that in a nice and easy enough way. And that is really cool because if you have a certificate environment, uh, then uh, you'll be happy about the, the SSL cert and TLS cert support. But um, the appreciate keys are much easier to set up. And uh, if you are not much concerned about encryption, but you'd like to use it for that one remote proxy, the PSK will be just trivial to set up. Uh, how does, oh right, <laughs> uh, one thing which is not included at this time is the Kerberos support because, uh, well, that's a bit different, a bit more complicated, and uh, let's start with something that we can actually make work first. Uh, for this uh, to work, for the encryption to work, the support must be compiled in. Um, we'll talk about uh, that in a bit more detail in a moment as well. Um, in the Zabbix server, uh, in this example, there's the Zabbix server log fragment, and if it says TLS support yes, then probably you can use encryption with this daemon. Uh, this must be available for any daemon that you would like to use this feature with. And uh, let's take a look at, uh, at the, the normal person who's upgrading and they might be interested in using the encryption. When you are upgrading Zabbix, the, uh, the thing that you will see in the front end uh, let's say in the host list, you might see a column encryption with none and none. Uh, personally, I, I, I still don't know for sure which is which, just from the top of my head. One is for incoming, one is for outgoing connections. Which is which, we'll try to figure that out in a moment. And if anybody has a genius usability suggestion on how to make this obvious without creating like this long column names, uh, at this point, feedback would be perfect. So. Um, Another thing, let's discuss first just the passive agent and the most simple scenario with the pre-shared keys so that we don't get flooded with all kind of certificate details and everything else. So in the host list, we have none, none. And in the host properties, we have a new tab which holds all the uh, encryption related uh, settings for this host. Uh, by default, when you will upgrade, you will not get any encryption, which means that all your agent-based monitoring will work exactly like it did before the upgrade, which is kind of 
expected, I hope. And um, then when you have uh, decided to use encryption with this host, uh, and uh, as mentioned, in this case, we will look at the passive agent, and we'll use the, the most simple option, the pre-shared key. We just set the connection method to pre-shared key. Uh, regarding the design of the form, where does the drop down, those, those checkboxes, uh, that uh, is, at least personally, I really hope that might still be uh, improved, and there might be a talk about uh, this tomorrow as well, so we might get some nicer selectors there. And uh, once you have enabled the encryption, the uh, entries in the host list might list PSK, Richard Key, in one of those, in, in place of those, one of those nuns. Which is which, I still am not that sure just looking at the list of hosts. So uh, personally, I've developed this, this habit. Look at other hosts. <laughs> and uh, if they have multiple entries, then that is the column for incoming connections. Because when connections are incoming, then uh, they are, uh, you, you are able to choose multiple methods, whether it's certificates and pre-shared keys, or not encrypted and pre-shared keys, or all three of them, or maybe one of them. Uh, for the outgoing connections, it's just one method. So uh, if we don't come up with that genius usability idea to identify these better, then uh, this, this monomic might, might have to, well, be kept alive. Sorry? Uh, arrows could be used, but do the arrows work from the server's perspective or from the agent's perspective? <laughs> so, yeah, it could be, yeah. Well, uh, this would be a very good discussion uh, at the party today, because we will hopefully have our uh, user interface expert there. So I'm pretty sure he will enjoy being harassed about this topic, or, I mean, um, uh, getting very nice ideas. So, and... Uh, once we have enabled the encryption on the front-end side for the host and the host properties, on the agent side, we use the parameter uh, TLS accept. Uh, this parameter, and we're still talking about the passive agent, so this is only incoming connections, accepts three options. It's a comma delimited list of unencrypted, PSK, and cert. So this means what type of connections the agent will accept. And um, there are uh, still keeping to talk about the pre-shared key only, there are two options in the agent that determine how the pre-shared key configuration will be determined. There's a pre-shared key identity, which is sort of like name of the pre-shared key, I'm not sure about the better, better analogy, and a pre-shared key file. Uh, currently, uh, personally, uh, <laughs> I would really love to, sh uh, to define the pre-shared key directly in the file, but as Zabbix developers think it might be less secure than uh, requiring a separate file, so uh, it is a separate file. Security-wise, separate file is better because uh, then users are less likely to expose the keys just by copy-pasting configuration and maybe some other reasons like uh, defining more strict permissions on those files. Uh, that TLSPSKI, if you just look at the uppercase letters in the second row, that reads a bit Polish to me when I try to pronounce it, so... Um, yeah. And actually, that's it. <laughs> if we're talking about the passive agent using pre-shared keys, we have encrypted traffic between the agent and the Zabbix server. So I was talking a lot about that, but once you have walked through all this, you probably will be able to set up encryption very quickly. If you are interested in using certificate-based encryption, that is slightly more complicated, uh, but not terribly so. On the uh, front-end side, in the host properties, uh, we choose the certificate as the connection method. And uh, you can also uh, sort of verify the issuer and the subject on the certificate. That would be on the other end. So especially if you have multiple CAs installed in the Zabbix server, then uh, being able to verify that it's that issuer, is, that's, where, that's where this certificate is coming from, um, that's an extra layer of security. There are way more parameters regarding this in the agent daemon configuration file than it was with the pre-shared key, so that's a bit more complicated. Uh, but for most of these, especially if you have worked with certificates a bit, uh, it should be obvious what they do. Uh, I will not go into much detail here, but uh, you, ha you can use the revocation list, um, you can also verify the issuer and subject uh, in the configuration uh, on the agent side. 
Uh, well, obviously, you also must have the actual certificates and CA files and everything else, but that's a totally different topic, which we are just not touching at all uh, today. And uh, talking about the active agent, so uh, we, we talked about the passive agent, server connecting to the agent. Let's talk about the agent connecting to the server. Here, the encryption is supported as well. Uh, and now, on the server side in the host properties, we may select one or more uh, methods for uh, securing the connection, whether it's nothing at all, whether it's appreciate key again, or a certificate, or several of these, or all of them together. Uh, for the agent, for the active agent in the configuration file, there's a different parameter, TLS connect, and in this case, we specify only a single method here. So agent will connect to server, and that will be always in unencrypted mode, or always pre-shared key, or always the certificate-based encryption. Uh, pretty much same as with the passive agent, uh, the pre-shared key identity and uh, file also can be specified, oh, must be specified here. And the same, we cannot specify the pre-shared key directly in the file, uh, but that's pretty much not different from the passive agent. And let's look at the summary, because that's lots of fields we discussed, lots of options. So uh, if you have no idea what to do when you are upgrading and if you'd like to use the encryption, then for the passive agents, you set in the agent daemon configuration file that besides the unencrypted method, it should also accept pre-shared key method, you specify the pre key identity and file, and then in the host properties in the front end, you specify the same things, like which methods uh, to actually, which specific method to use to the agent. Uh, in this case, you switch from unencrypted to pre key, and you specify the key and the identity. Uh, the great thing is that if you do it this way, in this sequence, you pretty much don't lose any values because there's not a moment when the agent and server would disagree. At first, agent accepts unencrypted and encrypted connections, and once the server switches from unencrypted to encrypted, the agent switches to only accepting the encrypted method. Uh, obviously, the same as before, the, the actual encryption support must be compiled in. And of course, keep in mind that this might be a very strong driver for upgrading these Zabbix agents. Most people keep Zabbix agents until the box this kind of disintegrates. In this case, you're not getting encryption if you use an older Zabbix agent. Uh, active agents, pretty much the same, just the other way around and a bit different parameters. First, in the host properties, we add the acceptance or, or accepting of the pre key connections, uh, specifying the key and identity, and in the agent side, we switch to the pre key method specifying the key and identity, and that's it. Uh, this also means that you can easily upgrade or, or convert agents from unencrypted to encrypted connections uh, one by one, you are, or in some subgroups, you, you're not required to do that in one massive go. And if you got scared about upgrading, then just a reminder, encryption is totally optional. When you upgrade, no encryption, nowhere everything works exactly like it did, everything still keeps on working. You're getting your data, you're not just suddenly required to upgrade all the agents. Uh, getting a bit more into the technical details, uh, Zabbix uh, developers decided to support three different libraries right out of the box, OpenSSL, GNU-TLS, and uh, what was called PolarSSL, now it's Embed TLS. So uh, you choose which one you would like to use or which one is packed in you, uh, packaged in your uh, distribution. Um, that is one significant driver for this was so that we don't get heavily dependent on one specific library, so that if there's a need to, to, to completely switch to something different, then the methods are a bit more abstracted. And uh, also, uh, just in case if some uh, security issue is discovered in some library, never happened, but if it happens, then you could switch to a different library and at least be secure. Okay, by now it's not even funny, there have been too many security problems with all the encryption libraries, uh, so that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, doing things properly, that's very good. And uh, one thing, doing things properly, especially when you're dealing with security, with encryption, is being pedantic. So thank you to all the Zabbix developers who are pedantic. You're great. So uh, specifically for this feature, there's a lot of things that could be missed, and there's a lot of things which are not being missed, so that is great. Uh, Alex, I mentioned that development takes quite a bit, and the uh, development of encryption is always uh, 10 days away, it might be finished, but I'm not complaining about that. I'm glad about it being done properly. So uh, 
it's working pretty much identically from user's perspective as much as reasonably possible with all, with all those three different libraries. You don't have to do different magic or different parameters just if you're using this library or that library. And there's quite a lot of pain being suffered to actually make it happen that way. So uh, I don't know, we could, we could call this a, the upcoming Wandi Developer Appreciation Weekend. And uh, we have the, the uh, lead developer for this feature, Anders, in the room. We have the lead tester, Acevedo, in the room. Uh, Alexei himself worked on the front end side initially. Uh, we have uh, Eves working on the encryption side, I think, lately on the front end side. If I'm forgetting anybody, I'm terribly sorry about that, but uh, you should just uh, go to the party tonight and be proud of yourself. So, uh, yeah, talking about proper things, there's another thing, which is proper, so they're, they both are very important. Uh, talking about why things take longer, they, uh, there's also lots of work being put into making things not terribly complicated to use, not terribly complicated to debug. This is encryption, this is security, so it will make things more complicated, but at least uh, there's lots of effort making the error messages good and very helpful. Uh, and also, in some cases, making sure that error messages appear, which was not always the case historically. So uh, we hope that this feature will not be pain when you actually decide to use it. Uh, so Zabbix agent, Zabbix server communication, great. What about those other two small utilities, Zabbix get, Zabbix sender, completely support it. So that's awesome. Uh, one thing which gets a bit more interesting is when you look at the help output of Zabbix get before 3.0, it's something like this. You don't have to read it, you, hopefully you know it by heart, most of you at least. Uh, but um, in Zabbix 3.0 it will look something like this. You don't have to read it. So uh, that is all the encryption options in there. Appreciate key, certificates, bunch of examples. So the, the actual user documentation uh, should also be something that you should not omit. Consult that first, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to solve any problems with this feature. Uh, Zabbix Sender, again, fully supported encryption-wise. Uh, there the help output is even longer, and I'm not putting that up. You might think I'm showing you some picture of starry skies or something, so. Uh, that might not be very readable at all. But the same functionality in Zabbix Get and Zabbix Sender. Appreciate key certificates or unencrypted, all that is fully supported. Uh, as uh, just a quick example for the Zabbix Sender, when you are sending, in the most simple case, one value from the command line, you specify the, um, there's actually, no, no, nothing is missing, it's good. So there's the Zabbix server, there's the host, there's the item key, and there's the value. So four parameters in the basic trivial case. Uh, if you switch to encryption, then that becomes a bit more complicated because at least in the case of the pre-shared keys, that's already three new parameters. There's the pre-shared key method itself, there's the pre-shared key identity, and the actual uh, key. Uh, the key must come from the file, the same thing as before. You cannot do as far as I could figure out it from the command line. Uh, which is not that bad, you should not put passwords on the command line anyway. Um, and if you would compare what's actually going on the wire between this and that before encryption was there, you might recognize this. So uh, there's pretty much, yeah, whatever user sending that's very well readable. Uh, well, that, that's not very a truthful representation, but once you enable the encryption, you'll get something like this. So um, it's um, a bit harder to, to sniff, at least that, yeah, for most people. Uh, just a bit of summary, so encryption will be built in and it will be pretty easy to use. It will also provide strong authentication because currently if you have, who has set up accidentally two active agents with the same name and been mightily confused about that? You, okay, I hear yes, but no arms up, so it's like, yes, I don't want to admit that. But yeah, I, I've done that, so hey, it's, it's uh, pretty common. Uh, with this feature, that should be much harder at least. It's still possible, I guess. Uh, upgrade is very easy because once you upgrade, everything keeps working as it did before and going to encryption is easy because, well, you just do that one by one or in groups of hosts. And you can do that very selectively just by that single important proxy or those two hosts because they are monitoring some financial systems. A technical summary, well, it's built in, it's easy. It's easy to upgrade. Okay, a bit more technical. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, appreciate key, uh, TLS and unencrypted methods for all the communication, almost all of it. Uh, and three different backend libraries, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, and Polar 
or embed Porcel or embed TLS. Other things to keep in mind, uh, those who still remember that plain agent, the one without D, uh, it's still not dropped in 3.0. So if you're using it, speak up, because we don't know anybody doing that in production at this time. But encryption is not implemented for that thing, just in case. And um, there might be a bit bigger overhead for the uh, encrypted communication. So uh, this might be less of an issue with active agents, which can pool multiple values. They can send multiple values in a single connection. So you might want to consider using this with active agents maybe a bit more. But do some performance tests in your environment to be sure about that. And uh, you might want to consider increasing the buffer send on the agent side. If that is the uh, performance problem for the active agents, uh, that might result in, be, uh, in the agents doing less connections but sending more in a single connection. So the actual initial initialization of the uh, encryption is done not that often. All right. we, we should not forget the proxies. So uh, everything that was about the agents is fully supported for the proxies. Active, passive, pre-shared keys, uh, certificates, everything is good. Who here would plan to use encryption to some degree, or any, or completely, or, well, uh, quite a few, not like half, but yeah, like one third possibly. Uh, have you tested it? Who has tested encryption? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's uh, nine, ten. That's a bit better than I expected, actually. So yeah, that's my suggestion. Do test it if you did not do that yet. If you test it after the release and something doesn't work for you, see the title. At this stage, developers are much more likely to actually do anything about the problem you might discover, whether that's compatibility with specific library in some distro or, or whatever else that might be. Your environment is special. It's different than whatever other environment we might be working with. Uh, the developers involved in the encryption work are available on Zabbix IRC channel. So don't harass them about this. But uh, if you actually have a really significant feedback collected or, or there's some issue that you would like to discuss that's not only done through the Jira issue comments, you can actually communicate with them in a bit more real time method. And yeah, if there are any questions. Yeah, a small question. C can you go back to the TCP dump side slide? So what's about the encryption in what level? I see the Zabbix, uh, is, is the Zabbix header in the middle column here, yeah? is in plain text. So you have an encryption in the application level, yeah? Sorry, that is no encryption. Yep, in, in, the, in the middle column, I see that the Zabbix is, is a header of the Zabbix protocol. I haven't investigated that personally. I was looking at that. Yeah. I did this slide like half an hour ago. So, uh, <laughs> oh no, we have actually a person who will tell you exactly what that is here. This plain text, Zabbix, in encrypted data flow, it corresponds to pressure at key identity, uh, which is transmitted in uh, clear text uh, in first uh, message. So the um, server knows which PSK, uh, which, which pressured key it should select for this uh, communication session. So um, it is st in standard, that's because Richard cho chose um, PSK identity yeah. with value Zabbix. So you uh, please avoid putting uh, sensitive data in your PSK identities. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Uh, so there, that was my best guess, but I was afraid of telling lies. So, and uh, you're right. Those who saw the person uh, answering this, uh, that's the lead encryption developer. So, uh, is is there is an option to use uh, against config file in Zabbix sender and Zabbix uh, get in case of encryption? It should be, yes. I don't, I'm not sure whether it works right now. It should be. But I would ex well, as I said, development is still ongoing. So uh, this feature is not in trunk yet. It's only in a development branch. So th that sh must be supported, but I cannot guarantee that it's supported right now like as, as, as of what code is committed. If it does not report that as a bug. Um, 
have you tested uh, the performance impact of cryptography in the traffic? What's the difference? What's the increasing consum uh, CPU consumption? I personally haven't uh, tested what might be the increase in, in performance both on, on uh, resources, processing, and traffic. Um, so I, 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 don't, I haven't done that, unfortunately, myself. Uh, there's some, some comment and some addition to do this. Uh, problem with current implementation is that every uh, new Zabbix TCP connection, which is encrypted, requires full TLS handshake. Uh, we do not support currently uh, TLS session caching uh, or TLS uh, session ticket using. Uh, so you might be interested to use fer encryption first uh, with uh, between proxy and, and server, not for um, every uh, passive item check. Uh, so we, we, I, re I realized that I cannot develop uh, uh, so, uh, so, so large change to, to also support tickets or session uh, caching in the first. Because our, our goal was to go from uh, no encryption to some reasonable encryption in this first step. Is there a possibility that uh, Windows again will use uh, Windows Certificate Store? Because it will... I'm, I, I don't think that has been evaluated yet currently. So there might be a possibility it's not on the roadmap. Oh. We try to support encryption with uh, Windows Agent D also. But uh, I don't think uh, we support um, uh, certificate store on, on Windows. Uh, it's extra development, it's, so we have to finish this feature so it can actually work. And then we will polish it, uh, we'll put extra, extra because, cream on it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, certificates it uh, should be described in uh, um, agent configuration file, uh, just as on, on Unix, Linux, uh, same on Windows. You put uh, stuff into files and describe path names. Where is this file? Uh, okay. We actually need uh, to this feature on IBM X platform <laughs> to secure IBM X traffic. IX6. Do you have Zabbix agent there running? Yes, on uh, some on IBM X platform. Uh, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work if you can compile it with the proper encryption library. So uh, that's probably a good thing to test and uh, <laughs> provide your feedback. <laughs> yes, are you ready to test it? So I would expect that should work, actually. I, I don't see a reason why not. How do, like, so When we begin? Three? When we begin to test. Uh, on X. Um, on X. Now, when uh, we are closer to finishing the feature, <laughs> that's a weasel answer, obviously, as you can guess. I, I think it worked. Uh, your talk focused mainly on the agent, uh, the several aspect of migrating uh, your agent in the encryption uh, uh, world. Uh, I think the same consideration are apl applicable uh, more or less uh, to the proxy. Absolutely. Proxy upgrading and encryption would work yeah. pretty much what, the same. So what about the um, overhead consideration? Is it the same uh, regarding the passive versus the active uh, or something is changing? I mean, the, the setting uh, you suggested to, uh, to mitigate the... the, the Overhead. On well, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of minor improvement in performance might yeah, be yeah. by increasing the buffer send for the active agents because that might result in a smaller amount of uh, connections overall. Uh, the proxy already does up to 1,000 values in a single connection. So if you see that the session setting up and teardown is a significant problem, uh, you might want to increase the uh, data sender, what is the parameter name for the proxy, well, how often it's sending the data, which by default is one second. 
So if you increase that, and if your proxy is not like heavy, high, really high volume, uh, I would expect that it should help performance quite a bit. What about support for um, subject alternative names in the uh, uh, SSL certificates? Currently, that is not supported. It has that issue has been raised by service right here, if I recall correctly. So uh, it's on the radar, but not on the roadmap. Yeah, because you need that for HA to work. Otherwise, HA right. actually violates the whole you know premise of TLS and SSL. Um, so. Might also, be. I'd have to think about that, and you, you can try to, to give me all the details yeah. uh, later today because I'd like to kind of think about that a bit more. But uh, currently, that is not implemented, and there's as far, as far as I could follow, there's no specific plan to do it in this at this stage. Also, what about certificate revocation list? Does it, do you have support for pulling that from a URL? Because if you have not to push yet. it out to a file, that's ridiculous. Hey, it's the first implementation. What do we mean, ridiculous? Well, it's it's, that never, it's been, never going to happen. From it has been discussed. It will likely appear, but uh, we'll see when. So, if there are no more questions, then uh, remember that you can always go on RSC and discuss and uh, the latest development branches. Uh, if the problem or something is uh, too compli complicated for the community, developers might join in. Who knows? Uh, this is a great chance to actually uh, talk to developers or, or uh, in some other way figure out what they might think about your ideas or, or your feedback. And uh, that was cut off, so well, sorry. I had to text encrypt away, but that's not that critical. So thank you. Bye -bye.